What's going on guys? My name is Max and welcome to my brand new series titled Tech Reviews. The series where I take a look at tech and devices that will not only make your content creation easier, but hopefully a little bit more efficient. So for the longest time I used this Blue Yeti microphone right here and I would still keep using it, but it unfortunately crapped out on me. By now, I'm sure that most of you have heard about this microphone and seen plenty of reviews, but I ended up going with the Elgato Wave 3. The reason why I decided to go with the Wave 3 here is because I wanted to get all the benefits of using an XLR microphone without having to break the bank. Besides the microphone, what's really the biggest benefit of having an XLR setup? The answer to that question is obviously having a mixer to be able to feed your audio through, but also having a physical fader device to control your audio. The Wave microphones come with a piece of software that allows you to reroute and separate your audio, but it doesn't allow you to do either EQ stuff yet, but that's soon to come because the software is only going to get better from here. Look, the microphone's great, the software is great, and we're one step closer to having that XLR setup with a USB mic, but we're still missing the physical fader device. The good news for you guys is I found a device that will pair with any USB microphone setup, but especially it will pair well with the Elgato Wave software. And you know what the funny thing is, is this device is actually intended for making music and doing video editing. <laughs> So let's cut to the chase. We're gonna be talking about the Korg Nano Mini. Let's get into it. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we go over stuff like this all the time on this channel, as well as I have a full series dedicated to teaching you guys how to create content on multiple platforms. Before we discuss the Korg Nano Mini, I wanted to get a few things off my chest about the Wavelength software. Honestly, there's a ton of reviews out there about the Wave microphones as well as the Wavelength software, but I had a few things that I wanted to talk about that weren't discussed in those videos. Arguably the best and the coolest feature of the Wavelength software is the fact that you can separate all of your audio sources and have full control of your audio. But Elgato, please, for the love of God, fix the game source one because it's incredibly frustrating to have to redo this game one every Every single time I restart my computer. Let's just take two games that I've been playing a lot for example, Hitman 2 as well as Escape from Tarkov. Both those games have been awesome and I can route the game audio through the Elgato software through the game source. Which is honestly incredible because I can keep the game volume high while lowering other volume in like my browsers or anything, but the problem is that's annoying is the fact that every time I restart my computer it says that the game source is active on the game, but I have to do this weird switching of the audio source to be able to get it to work again. I mean, seriously, Elgato, fix that crap. <laughs> the next thing, and this ties directly into our Korg Nano Mini, but I really wish the Elgato software would directly support MIDI devices. For those of you that don't know, a MIDI device is a musical instrument digital interface. So the best way I understand it is that people use a piece of MIDI software to be able to help write their music or whatever, do their music production. I'm not a music guy, so I have no idea. So obviously MIDI devices are most used with MIDI software because it makes sense to use MIDI software. You use a corresponding MIDI device, but a lot of editing software like DaVinci Resolve, for example, or even a lot of audio software like Voice Meter allow for you to use a MIDI device through their software. So you know what the irony is of all this is that the Elgato Stream Deck does support MIDI devices, but the Wavelink software, which you think would make the most sense, does not. <laughs> I mean, seriously, come on, Elgato. You have this beautiful interface that is begging for a physical fader device to come in for streamers or content creators in general. So why not allow us to be able to use whatever MIDI devices we want? So with all that being said here, how did I get the Korg Nano Mini working with the Elgato Wavelink software if it's not supported? Well, it's not a secret that several people have done videos on the Korg Nano Mini, basically labeling it the Go XLR killer, but the most popular is probably Coalition Gaming. Definitely go watch his video, it's linked down in the description below, but I've got a little bit of a different take to take this to the next level. In his video, he talked about a piece of software called NK2 Tray. So we're gonna be using this software in combination with the Wavelength software to gain full control of our audio, not only naturally, but also through OBS. The first thing is pretty straightforward. Go down in the description below and download the NK2 Tray. This is honestly a super weird download because it doesn't actually notify you that it's downloaded, but you can verify it by checking down in the bottom right corner as to what you're seeing on the screen now, and you'll see this little blue icon. Once you've got the NK2 Tray downloaded, go down in the description again, and I've provided another link that instructs you on how to apply the NK2 tray to your startup page so that way it starts when your system starts. This is super important because if you don't do this, it's gonna reset all of these settings when you restart your computer, which is honestly very annoying. So once you have all that done, we're gonna set the NK2 tray aside for a second and we're gonna focus in on the Elgato Wave Link software. If this is your first time using the Elgato Wave microphone, make sure you follow the prompts that it's providing for you to separate your audio or you can just follow along with how I'm doing it on screen right now. After you get all the audio output sorted out, just route all your audio from the computer through the 
these different outputs like you're seeing on screen right now it's pretty straightforward from this point now once you've got your elgato software figured out we're going to pair it with obs so something i like to do with my audio and obs is i like to do something called a nested scene so i will create a whole scene dedicated to just all output audio what i advise you to do when you're adding these in is to name them the same thing as they are in the wavelength software because it's going to keep it more organized for you so you know what you're looking at here so make sure while you're adding these in you're routing your audio from the wavelength software to obs meaning if you're doing a music one for example you're going to make sure to add the wavelength music option also make sure you're doing a test to make sure that the music is coming through there because what could happen is maybe something's not routed correctly through the wavelength software or obs but you just want to make sure that all of these are working before you start messing with the midi device so lastly we're going to go back to the nk2 tray so what you're going to do is you're going to go down to the bottom right and you're going to pull up this blue icon and you're going to right click on it and you should be greeted with something like this so if everything is set up right and your korg nano is being recognized by the computer and the software you should be seeing eight different faders this is where you get to choose what each fader does so we're going to reroute all of our faders to be able to control each part of our audio that we set up through the wavelength software so for example we're going to set fader one to music and then we're gonna set fader 2 to browser whatever you just want to set it up to whatever you want because this is where you get to choose what each fader does sometimes it may crash it's the unfortunate thing about this software but it works the majority of the time once you get it set up the first time so definitely re-download it if it has an issue because it can be a little buggy at times once you have all that done it should look something like this so an alternative way of doing this is you can go to an application that's making noise let's say Spotify for example you can click on that and you can go to your Korg device and press the S button and that's gonna automatically assign the fader to that particular application. Once you have the fader set up to this, you can actually do a lot of cool things. Like for example, the M button right there next to the fader device is actually gonna be able to mute the audio coming from that application. Also the play and stop button and also the fast forward buttons do work with things like YouTube or Spotify or anything like that. Now if you have OBS still pulled up, you can start to see that if you mess with the music volume here, it, if you pull the fader all the way down to zero, the music's gonna turn off. So the major downside to this, and honestly it's phenomenal that I got this working with the Wavelength software is the fact that it doesn't affect the fader devices in the Wavelength software. See, in my ideal world, I would love to see the fader going down and also the Wavelength fader going down because the coolest thing about the Wavelength software is the fact that you can make the audio lower or higher for you or lower or higher for your audience and that's really nice because then your audience can hear less or you can hear more whatever so the workaround here is you're going to have to go in before you start streaming and preset all of your audio to whatever level you want for your audience and for you to hear and that way when you use the faders to turn the volume up and down obviously it will go down more for you so if you want music still playing for your viewers music will go off for you and it'll still be playing for your viewers so now guess what you had the ultimate usb microphone set up for around 200 dollars <laughs> Let's be real, is this the most cost effective way for you to use your USB microphone? Well, honestly, I don't know, that's for you to decide, but at the end of the day, if you have an Elgato Wave microphone, this is definitely worth looking at because one of the most frustrating things that I ran into when using the Wavelength software is the fact that if I was playing a game, for example, I had to drop the game and do a whole bunch of weird shenanigans just to be able to lower or raise my volume if my viewers were having a hard time hearing or it was too loud. So definitely if you already have a Wave microphone, you made that investment, I would say get a Korg Nano or some sort of MIDI device similar to this and do this setup because it is definitely worth it because hopefully one day Elgato will directly support MIDI devices in the Wavelength software. So that way we can use these devices directly and not have to do this weird workaround. I hope this was helpful. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button down below as well as leave a comment down below if you went with this combo because I'm curious to see what your experiences are with this device combo. Lastly, just letting you guys know, I do stream on Twitch. So if you want to come and ask me questions about the Wave microphone or the Korg Nano Mini or just anything related to content creation, that's the best place to do it. But anyways, guys, that's it. Thank you so much. And as always, we'll see you next time. For those of you that don't know, a MIDI device is a musical instrument device interface. That is so hard to say. Why the frig is it called a MIDI device? <laughs> For those of you that don't know, I'm... <laughs> I can't say this, it's so hard. For those of you that don't know, I'm... <laughs> <laughs>